Hello and welcome to the seminar six. Today is an important day, as today is the last meeting of the draft day with the Altmark. Today is technically the beginning of the Altmark separate journey in a way, but we won't call it that because, well, this caused trouble as I've written up there. This is the Altmark. She is the logistics hub, the thing without which all the graph state has achieved would not have been possible. Still so often the most ignored part. What happens is all the merchant seamen sailors, about 140 from the recent captures, get put aboard her, and all the officers get transported to, uh, transferred to the graph state. Officers are higher value prizes, but they're also more problematic. Um, they could actually, if they take over the ship, could theoretically navigate home, all these things. So if you can separate off the officers who are the higher values, you leave the men theoretically leaderless. Now, that's all within rough estimates, because let's be honest, the average seaman who spent enough years at sea, even if they are not an officer, will have probably picked up a fair amount of navigation, fair amount of skill. So, it's not without possibility that if they take over, they can't get home themselves. But it's an effective form of decapitation because you're taking away the existing command structure, especially of merchant sailors. So today is the big, is the end. We're now in the final phase. We have got literally a week to go before the battle. Eleven days to go before it's all over. And this is the last time the Altmark is seen. Last time they connect together. It matters. But it matters more because this is the connection to Germany. This is the grass phase of a friend in the South Atlantic. Remember, I have been speaking about the fact that she wasn't getting as much support from the South American nations as we might have presumed she'd have got, considering the power and the size and significance of the, of the German communities within the region. They were just not able to provide support, and there were reasons for this. But this meant that the Altmark is this other piece of sovereign German territory, this other reliable support in many ways, as I said, without which the operation would not have been possible. But arguably, and this is where I get into trouble, the Altmark represents something even more than all of that. She represents the reality that in no modern war, in no war can you get by with just warships in terms of fighting the war. You need the merchant ship. Even your surface freighters, they need support. They need auxiliaries. Of course, the Royal Navy would point to the Royal Fleet Auxiliary, but as lessons of the Falklands War show, you need far more than that. So a merchant marine is an essential product to have for global reach. This, in 1939, this ship was global reach, not the Graf Spey. The Graf Spey was the force you were projecting globally. She was the power you were taking globally, but this was what global reach was. This was the logistics, this was the supplies, this was the essential sucker needed to achieve it. So. A lesson I want to be taken home from today and I want to be considered, especially as we're looking forward to all sort of deba defense debates and NATO and all these things. You can't forget logistics and you have to maintain not just your fighting strength, but your auxiliaries. Because there is no point having a million tanks if they can only go as far as their fuel, till their fuel runs out. There is also no point in having 10 tanks for being able to supply them anywhere in the world. You need to strike a balance between the two. You need to think 
being spread. In World War II, it's arguable that the German Navy hadn't had the support it needed to conduct these operations. Ideally, the Graf Spey should not have been down there with just one support ship, and ideally the support ships would have swapped over before the Graf Spey did, so they could have maintained permanent presence down there South Atlantic. That wasn't possible. The German Navy wasn't big enough, they didn't have a big enough support network. So, they had one, and this is what happened, and this is what they achieved. And we won't get into the number of ships sunk and the actual real damage done. We'll get into the feet, though, of actually getting down in the South Atlantic, actually operating down there in a war for September, October, November, and much of December. Four months of offensive operations, arguably been down there most of the time since August. So five months deployed, one supply ship. Think of all the thousands of miles that have been steamed by both ships. Think of all the things that have been done by both ships. The real story of the South Atlantic campaign is the logistics, especially on the German side. For the Royal Navy, with its far more numerous bases down there, well, in fact, it actually had bases down there, but of course they're more numerous, and the support ships it had, and some of the expectations you place on the Royal Navy, especially in the 1920s and 30s, it's less a surprise the amount of forces they managed to coordinate and operate down there. And what we're getting to those, especially on the 14th and 15th. But this is a big thing, and it deserves to be studied in more than detail than probably I've managed to give it time to. But I I hope I inspired a couple to go look at it. Take care, have a nice day, and I will see you.